Hey guys, I'm Kim. Welcome to my home. Today I'm going to be making pineapple upside down cake, but I'm going to be using my own wheat berries. I'm going to grind them down, turn them into a flour, and use them instead. Now I'm going to go with Betty Crocker's recipe for pineapple upside down cake because I've used it in the past, making it exactly how they do it on the recipe, but I'm going to do a couple little changes. I'm not going to use Crisco. I'm going to use butter in place of it because I looked it up on my phone. You can use coconut oil, you can use vegetable oil, you can use butter. And I like coconut oil, but I don't want to have a slight flavor of coconut. I'm going to use butter instead. So let's get started. Now I have these pineapples. I'm using real pineapple, not from the can. I used to do the can, but I have these on hand from our juicing and then I had them left over and they're trying to go a little rotten on me. So I want to use them up before they are compost. So I have three trials, hopefully I can just use one and I'll turn the other ones into some kind of fabulous recipe for dinner. So this is my Wonder Meal. I love it. This grinds all my wheat berries and for this one I'm going to be using soft wheat. And all you do is you have these two compartments. This is where your uh, flour is going to be stored. Now you can't store wheat once you grind it like you do the store brand because this will go bad. Um, I've left it in there overnight one time because I knew I was going to use it the next day after I'd milled it already. But you can also just stick it in the freezer and it's good for a little bit, maybe three to five days. You don't, you don't store this. You store it in the wheat berry form because uh, then it's good forever. Uh, but you don't store the flour because it will go bad. So you just pull this little guy up right here and you insert the tube into your grinder and it's just going to grind it here and it's going to go in your little container there. So to get one cup of flour, one cup of flour is equivalent to two thirds wheat berries. Now I always go a little bit more than what a recipe calls for because uh, when you're dealing with whole wheat berries, sometimes the measurements are a little skewed. So I like to have a little on hand just in case I need a little bit more. And there's also a waiting period. Like when I make pancakes with my wheat berries, uh, I have to wait a little bit because they will thicken the batter. It just takes a little more time. It's not instantaneous like your store-bought flour is, right? So I'm gonna do two cups or two, two third cups that will equate to two cups of flour. Now let me see what my recipe says. This pineapple upside down cake says I need how much flour? One and a one third cups all purpose flour. Okay, so this is my all purpose flour. And so I've made two cups of flour. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop right there. Now if you have this Wonder Mill, it is amazing, I love it. And it says to turn on your machine before you add your berries. I never do that. I am breaking the rules, I know. But it's like, I don't, I don't really know how much I want to do. And I don't, for some reason, it gets me a little uh, stressed when it's running. I'm like, my berry stuff is not in there. So I just do it this way and I haven't had any problems. Now I'm gonna turn it to, in between pastry and bread because I want it just a little bit finer and that too plays into how thick your batter will be depending on what you're making. But I have it right in the middle here. Now I'm gonna press on and you wanna hold it when you turn it on because it will go uh, for a ride if you don't. Oh, plug it in would be great too. All right, we'll plug you in. All right, here we go. And that's it guys, uh, grinding my own flour just took about 20 seconds, it's that easy and it's so worth it. It's cram full of nutritional value. Just eating this in bread form alone is amazing. It's so good for you. They say bread is bad for you. Well, God is the bread of life, right? So bread is not bad for you. It's just the way that it has been um, manufactured now. Along and along in history, the nutrients has been taken out. But anyway, you can research that for yourself.
And I also have a video where I talk a little bit more about it. It's when I do the review on Wonder Mill, I actually talk more about the, the bread qualities from grinding your own wheat. Does that make sense? So anyway, this guy was actually supposed to be connected up here. He fell off apparently. I didn't realize it. Yeah, this is my wheat and it smells amazing. And it's got all the vitamins and minerals and it's not white. Real wheat's not really white guys. Next thing I need to do I'm not doing margarine, I'm doing butter. Um, get some brown sugar. I'm going to cut up my pineapple. I'm not doing cherries, I think they're gross. Um, we just did the flour, sugar shortening milk, baking powder, blah, 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 blah. Hopefully they're not rotten. Oh, this one might be rotten. I'm just gonna cut it down the center. I was gonna make it all pretty, but. I don't know if that's going to be a possibility with these pineapples. Um, I think I'm just going to put that one aside so that you're done. No, thank you. This is my little compost. Well, it's not little, it's my compost bin inside the house and then I go put it in my composter. The lid is perfect. Let's try this one. It's even scarier. You see all that brown on there? Yikes, I really don't know about this. I was hoping to make it the rings, but I couldn't find my fancy, this looks fine. I couldn't find my fancy, um, pineapple cutter. I used to have one, or maybe I just misplaced it, or I probably gave it away when I was purging my kitchen again. I like to do that. So. Um, let's do the last one. I'll do the last one. Let's see how this is. Mm, that one's pretty. That one's got it all around it. We'll see. We'll see how we can do. I just hate wasting food, which is really cool though, the way that we are changing our lifestyle now. We're able to give some of this stuff to our chickens that we don't eat, uh, and we compost a lot of it, which then feeds the garden and the garden feeds us. It's just like a circle. It's, it's really neat how you can use everything. There doesn't have to be any waste. I'm gonna set this aside while I make the batter that we're gonna put in. I sprinkled my two thirds uh, packed brown sugar. Uh, this raw sugar doesn't pack as much as conventional regular sugar. I don't know what you call it, but uh, I sprinkled it in there. You're supposed to do your butter first, but honestly, I don't see why it matters. So I just put mine in the microwave. I'm just breaking up the little, little bit of clump that's left there, and I'm gonna drizzle it on. And this called for, this recipe called for a fourth cup butter. And then later it calls for a third cup of shortening, but I am doing a third cup of butter instead of the shortening. So you have a fourth and a third, you do the math. There we go. And I guess we're supposed to mix that around a little bit. I haven't made this recipe in a long time. So this may not be the healthiest recipe, which, you know, uh, just eating stuff that's not in boxes to me is much better. I wanna do scratch recipes to me that is healthier. Um, I'm not going to be a vegan or a vegetarian or anything, and that's okay if you are. That's your choice, right? But this is healthier for our family, and I have kids. They're gonna want sweet things, so. I like to cook from scratch and I want to do, oh goodness, I want to do more of that and this is one of those recipes that I think they will enjoy and it's from scratch and from our own whole wheat. So the next thing I'm going to add in is my pineapple and we are just going to lay them in here. I love 
real pineapple, not the can. Like if I have nothing else, I love the can, but uh, I really have switched over. I haven't had canned pineapple forever. I do have one or two in my, my pantry just for occasions when I don't have real pineapple, but we juice a lot now with pineapple, so we have this on hand most times. one and a third of flour that I'm adding to this bowl here. Okay, and then we need a cup of granulated sugar. I use the raw sugar. And what did it tell me to do? I can't remember. One cup, all right. Three quarters milk. That's about three quarters. Then one and a half teaspoon baking powder, salt and egg. Baking powder. I have this ginormous thing that I found when I did my pantry clean out. <laughs> it's huge. That's a half. Half teaspoon of salt. Okay. All right, and one large egg. Isn't this egg pretty? This is from one of my hens. It's so pretty. I love the little spots. And they don't always give us spots on our eggs, but I love it when they do. All right, so. Perfection. Oh no. <laughs> and always clean your eggs before you use them. There we go. It is really neat since we switched over to uh, having chickens and eating their eggs. The, the taste is so much richer and it's kind of like a buttery flavor and the yolks are so much uh, more vibrant and most orangey. Uh, I'm buying free range and maybe that has something to do with it. I let them forage everywhere. We have six hens, well five hens and one rooster. It was an accident. But uh, it, is, it is pretty amazing um, the difference in Texture and flavor. Well, texture maybe not so much, but flavor definitely. It's just home goodness. I love it. All right, so I'm just supposed to mix this up and then I'm gonna pour on to my pineapples over here. And this is darker than what I'm used to, but it's again because of the wheat that I used. And you'll find that if you start doing this, everything's darker, like pancakes, oh my gosh. But what's cool is like when you do make pancakes, Maybe you could used to be able to eat three of them or four, maybe even five. I don't know. But when you eat homemade wheat pancakes, you, they fill you up more. They're richer and you can only eat maybe one. It's, it's pretty crazy, the difference. I'm going to put this in the oven and it's going to bake for about 35 minutes, uh, depending on your oven. Okay, so I have actually never tipped over an upside down cake. Like I've always made it or I have made it in the past. Uh, but I've never flipped it out of its container and actually put it upside down. Uh, kind of missing the point there, I guess, but it always tastes good. I was always for the flavor. Let's, let's get the flavor up in there and make something from scratch, right? So I am going to try, and I just read back on the, the directions. It didn't say to grease my pan. It did not say to do anything to the pan. So... I'm going to try it and I might have an epic failure here, but we'll still eat it because it's gonna taste delicious, so. I decided to bring you outside while we waited uh, because I thought maybe you'd like to see my garden. Uh, things are going to seed and bolting because of our weather has been hot and cold and hot and cold. So I have about 30 minutes to play around and I thought, why not the garden? It's one of my favorite places and maybe you'll enjoy this tour. So I'm just gonna show you around. Everything's pretty green. Some things have gotten a little cold and uh, there's just a lot going on in here and I can't wait until next month. I'm actually going to be planting new things. So I'll be digging a lot of this out here and I figured if I don't give you a garden tour now, we may not get one, so here we go. First thing I have here is my collards. We've actually eaten off these already once. So all these are the smaller leaves that we left behind, hoping that they will get bigger. And I have, how many beds? Two, four, six. I have six bags of collards because our family loves collards and we eat a lot of them. Then these are sizing up a little bit, but 
I like them when they're just a smidge bit bigger, right? So over here, I have garlic. I have never grown gar garlic before. And I believe this is a soft neck variety. I don't know much about the varieties yet. It's doing pretty well. I think three leaves have to turn yellow and this should not be ready for another month or so. Uh, super excited about the harvest though and hopefully it's not duds. <laughs> Everything seems to be doing good. Now I have duds over here. My onions are doing well. I seeded all the types. I did yellow, uh, white, and red. Red is actually my favorite because I don't know. I just like it a lot. Maybe this is the red one. Is that what that means? Anybody gardener around here? Uh, some of them are looking kind of sad. I don't know why that is, but I am excited about the harvest of these because we go through onions like crazy. I also planted some bunching onions. Can you see them? They were a major dud. I don't know what I did wrong. Uh, they, plant, they were planted the same time as my other onions. Over here, I have more collards. Some of them I might just go ahead and harvest because in their place, I'm going to put potatoes or squashes of some sort. And this was a dud right here because of my oak tree. I didn't realize he cast so much shade. Boo. And I'm not really sure what to do because I know summer gardening and winter gardening are a little bit different because the sun is different, for lack of a better word. So I'm interested to know when summer gets here, what, whatever I plant there, hopefully it'll do well. We shall see. Um, here is my herb bed. It's really sad at the moment. Uh, the frost got it last night. So this was all beautiful. You see under there? It was all luscious and green like that. But last night we had a frost and it didn't get to 32. It got to like 34 and I thought 32 is what I had to worry about. Anyway, that's pineapple sage. We have some rosemary I need to cut back so maybe it'll flush out and be nice and bulky instead of stringy. This was a bell pepper that came back from last year and now I know I don't know if it will survive. <laughs> and this was my lavender. I hope it's not dead. I see some life in there. It was doing so well. I planted this from seed uh, a year and a half ago. And I transplanted it here and it was so happy and beautiful. And it even flowered for me. Some more rosemary. This is my fennel. I let her go to seed. She's beautiful. She still even has some seeds on her. Can you see those? Need to pull those off of there. But I let her seed her babies everywhere and they're getting humongous. They didn't mind the cold very much either. But I have a ton of little plants that I need to harvest and give to people because I do not need that much dill or fennel. And this is another lavender plant. It didn't do as bad as the other one. It's still got some green to it. More peppers, more rosemary. I need to cut this one back. And chives. I realized this year that I need to plant a lot more chives and I need to get after these weeds that are just coming up like crazy. Goodness. Over here I have some pak choy. What's left of it. See how it's all going to seed. But I'm going to let, let it so I can save the seeds. Now my hands are dirty. Sorry guys. Anywho. The flowers are just beautiful. So I'm letting it go to seed. Some of these I'm popping off, so maybe I can get some more leaves from it. But I was just eating these in regular dishes. I mean, they're I think they're for stir fries and such, but I ate them just in a salad. They're delicious. This is Oroch right here, first time ever growing it. And it has like a spinachy kind of flavor. It's really good. I like the purple, red. My kale's, my kale is, killing it. It's doing really, really well. I'm very happy with it. I like the different colors. I think that's neat. It's from the same seed pack. I don't know what makes it change color. Who knows? Uh, my uh, chard. My chard. I, I think these are supposed to be huge. I don't think I got a mini variety. I don't know what's going on here, but I've had them in salads and they taste delicious, so I'm happy with that. And my broccoli. She is beautiful, but she went to seed because of the heat. I am, I am saddened. I really love broccoli and I wanted to eat a lot of broccoli. Now this one, maybe it won't bolt. 
It seems to stay compact. I'll keep my eye on that because if so, I'm just going to take that off and eat it like that. But what's cool about broccoli is even if it does bolt like this, you can eat the stems, the leaves, the flower. Well, can you eat the flowers? You're eating the flowers anyway before they're opened, right? So I don't know. You might need to check on that. But uh, last year I had a little bit of broccoli success, not a whole heck of a lot. So I cut up the leaves and the stems and I made um, coleslaw with it because I'm like, I'm going to eat this. <laughs> it is so good. And I just mixed it, mixed it in there with my... What do you do? Slaw. What is it? Cabbage. I mixed it up like it was cabbage and with my cabbage and uh, it was really good. Right here I'm trying my hand at Brussels sprouts. Last year it was an aphid attacked crop um, and I was okay with that because I was just playing around but this year I really 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 would like to have some broccoli. <gasps> Look. Is that? Is that baby broccoli? Is that them? Or is that a growth? What is that? I think there's a baby broccoli. Oh my gosh, can you see it? I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, guys, so excited. If that is baby broccoli, it looks like it. Now this one is not doing anything. So this is my best plant right here. Ah, Brussels sprouts, I say baby broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Here's our omelet bunny hutch and run. It has been amazing. I am using them as little lawn mowers and they just eat it all. Wow, see look, they've only been here a day. Look, to the ground. They're my little lawn mowers. They are amazing. Right here I have some raspberries. I transplanted from our back garden this year and they are coming back. I have a raspberry on this one, guys. I'm not gonna eat it though. I need to cut this one back. You see that? How cool is that? So I'm gonna cut them all back and make them all uniform and let them really root in. They've had about six months, but let them root in more and then grow up flush and be really beautiful. And my husband's also gonna make some posts so that these can lay on, because they get like six feet tall. Um, next is a flower bed that's really, really sad. I'm gonna add some flowers, some flowers to it. This is some heather, is it heather? What is it called? It's a purple flower. It's really pretty, and I can't think of the name. This is um, uh, something I was like, live or die. Uh, <laughs> I have some of those sometimes. I have some angelonia, which died. It was so beautiful, but there's still growth down there. I need to cut it back. It died because of the frost yesterday. Some vinca, some more angelonia. This is a butterfly bush. Some sedum. I love this red sedum. I love the depth of color it gives and some more weeds. I gotta get out here and do some weed control. Blackberries are looking good. This one just flushed out and didn't, didn't mind the cold. It's beautiful. Some more collards. My strawberry bed. I actually got rid of about 200 strawberry plants because you know they form runners and I just cut them all up. I transferred from our garden in the back to when we made these. And I kept what I wanted and I spaced them out really nicely. Now I know they'll probably make more runners, but I can't wait for this to all fill in. And they are looking so much more healthier this year because of the good soil that we brought in. This is topsoil. And I put a little bit of cow manure compost on top. So I am thrilled with what they're doing. I really want to do some jams this year. I, I really want to try my hand at canning, especially tomatoes and jams and put up a lot of our produce. i uh, really, really excited. We might need a new freezer or maybe we can just clean out the one we have. Uh, so, hey, you got your baby out? Here's Madison with her rabbit. Hey, hey, Indigo. Hey, bud. A little lawnmower. <laughs> we got them when they were little tiny and they fit in your hand. Such sweet boys. Over here I have my carrots. I'm so excited about these because we use these a lot in juicing and you can use the tops of carrots to eat and you eat the carrot. And I saw one the other day and it's really, this is not it, <laughs> that was not it. You could see that it was plumping up and I was just so excited because I grew carrots about two years ago. It didn't have much success, but it was my first year. So I gave myself grace. 
but these look so lush and happy and healthy and I kid with Cameron my youngest uh, that we need to get one of her dinosaurs and stick it in here because it looks prehistoric to me doesn't it can you just see a dinosaur stuck in there wouldn't that be so fun but here are my cabbages and it's got dirt on it because of uh, sprinklers and stuff but I saw one with a small little head if I can find it maybe that's heading up I'm not really sure um, again I'm still a newbie in gardening. So I think they're heading up in my sweet pea, snap peas. Oh my gosh, they're so sweet. Like I love peas in the freezer, freezer peas. I don't know what you call them. But homegrown peas are so much sweeter. Oh my goodness, like I need to plant 10 times as many peas. These peas right here, they're so beautiful. And I, my idea is for them to go up and over my trellis. They haven't done it yet, and um, I'm kind of disappointed in that, but um, next time I plant these, I'm going to plant so many more. I might even plant them on our fence over there. That would be nice, huh? The deer would probably like that, too. Over here, I have Chinese cabbage, and it's all going to seed, but we have cut on this so many times, and it's flushed out so many times, and I have so much of this in the freezer, and I eat it on salads. And the first leaves that I got were a little bit furry, but I didn't mind. I ate them anyway. Um, and I froze them. But you can use these in stir fries as well. I mean, really, they're greens. I actually don't... Well, I'll, we stir fry. But it doesn't stop me from putting in a noodle, garlic-based uh, noodle recipe. I put them in there and they all squish down. And they're delicious. <laughs> But really, I've cut on these probably five or six times. I mean, there's, they produce a lot. It's amazing. But hey, buddy. Hey. His name is Dakota. Two brothers from the same litter. That's the only way I think it would work. Hey, you're so cute. Yeah, we're doing a good job. All right, guys, that is my garden tour. Let's go check on the upside down pattern. All right, look at that beautifulness. Mmm. Let me get a oven mat <laughs> with one hand <laughs> and get this bad boy out. It smells so amazing. Oh my goodness. Um, pineapple upside down cake. There looks to be a lot of liquid in there and so I'm kind of hesitant and turning it out. It has set up nicely. I just don't know about turning it upside down. I think I might just make a huge mess. I'm kind of scared. This might be an epic fail. Ooh, it's moving. Okay, here we go. One, two, oh gosh, all that work. Three. I think it made it, but it's not gonna be pretty. Oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Oh. <laughs> you gotta come off there, Mr. Pineapple. I mean, come on now. Okay. Tis what it is. Um, how do I get this thing off there now? Like, really? Come on. Okay. I wish I could say that's not horrible. Scoot you right there. And ta da! <laughs> Upside down pineapple cake. I will probably never flip one back upside down ever again because I like the way aesthetically that looks in the pan better than this. But we did it guys. We have an upside down pineapple cake made from scratch, made with love, uh, and it looks edible. <laughs> so the crust I think set up really well. That was made with the wheat berries. All right, so let's try this bad boy. Get some pineapple in there. Get some flour, uh, from some cake topping. Mmm. That really is good. It really is good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, I could bring that home to Mama. She'd be proud. 
That is really good. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned some things and I will see you in the next one. Bye.